The Family TV Mass is brought to you by Achievers Fuel and Service Center Corporation, Dr. Montano G. Ramos General Hospital, and Planet Drugstore Corporation. Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. We welcome everyone as we celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, the fifth Sunday of Lent with the theme, Life from Death. The Mission Communications Foundation Incorporated of the Society of the Divine Word SVD brings to you this Eucharistic celebration at the Salitao Hall of the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word, Christ the King Mission Seminary, E. Rodriguez Sr. Avenue, Quezon City. Our Mass Presider is Reverend Father Don Dion C. Soriano, SVD, Associate Vocation Director of Christ the King Mission Seminary. And as one community and family gathered in Christ, let us all begin our Eucharistic celebration. We are gathered together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us call to mind our sins and ask Him for pardon and strength. You are the author of the new and eternal covenant. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the seed whose death produced the fruit of eternal life for sinful humankind. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You draw all human beings to yourself through your death and resurrection. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The prophecy of a new covenant, written not on stone, but on the hearts of people, is of vital importance in the history of salvation. 
This prophecy became a reality in Jesus Christ, and we are all part of its constant fulfillment. The first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not like be the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they broke my covenant. And I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them, and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sins no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out of your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressor, transgressors your ways and sinners shall return to you. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Today, the author of the letter to the Hebrews reminds us that our salvation is the fruit of Christ's prayer, suffering, and obedience unto death. We enjoy His salvation in proportion to our obedience to Him. The second reading. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son, Though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Whoever serves me must follow me, says the Lord. And where I am, there also will my servant be. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory.
In the gospel today, the death of Christ was not an unexpected regrettable accident, but a vital moment in the overall plan of salvation. Jesus accepted it in full freedom, knowing that the salvation of humankind depended on it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now. Yet, what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, brothers and sisters. We are now on the fifth Sunday of Lent. And uh, I read this story while I was preparing my homily that there was this man who was lost in the desert. Unfortunately, he ran out of water. But fortunately, after some time, he stumbled upon a hut with a water pump or jetmatic or poso or bomba sa Tagalog. But then, he noticed yung pitchel doon sa, gitna, sa gilid ng jetmatic o ng poso. At ang, doon sa pitchel may nakasulat, may nakalagay na tubig at may nakasulat. At ang sabi doon sa sulat, you have two choices. Number one, you can drink this water and satisfy immediately your thirst. But at the end, you will run out of water. And the second choice, your second option, is to use this water as a primer, pour, a, pour this water in that jetmatic, and then you will have fresh water and a limited supply of water. After this, you have to replace the water that you will use. Kung ikaw kaya yon, yung nasa ganun dilemma, nauuhaw ka na, nandiyan dyan na yung tubig, pero may dalawang choice ka, choices ka. Inumin yung tubig or ibuhos yung tubig doon sa jetmatic. Sa mga modern, sa mga modern society na ngayon, wala na yung jetmatic. Hindi na uso. Kaya medyo siguro hindi nyo ma hindi maintindihan nung iba. Ano ba itong jetmatic na sinasabi ni Father? Yung bomba na kinakailangan mong lagyan minsan ng tubig para ma-prime, para lumabas yung tubig doon. And so ang ginawa nung lalaki, he decided to go for the second option. Ibinuhos niya yung tubig doon sa jetmatic at saka binomba niya ng binomba matagal at unti-unti ay lumabas yung tubig and fresh water. And he was able to refill his water bottles and at the same time replace the, the water that he used uh, in order to prime that jetmatic. He has to sacrifice first his own thirst 
sumugal siya upang nang sa ganon magkaroon ng mas fresh water. In the same way, the gospel today is also speaking about this same theme. One week before Holy Week, our readings today, the first, the second, and especially the gospel, are filled with the pagpapahiwatig or hints about the incoming suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The gospel says that some Greeks came to Philip. According to some Bible scholars, these Greeks maybe are or were converts to Judaism. And they approached Philip because Philip was also a convert to Judaism. But this arrival of the Greeks triggered something about Jesus Christ. Hindi sinabi sa gospel na hinarap sila ni Kristo, pero nagsalita agad si Kristo. At ang sabi doon, this was a fulfillment of the prophecy as the prophet Isaiah has predicted. All mankind shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. So what is the point of the gospel today? The first point, Jesus Christ insisted on this. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat, but if it dies, it produces much fruit. Coming from an agricultural environment, I believe that we all know the process of planting, especially of uh, palay. Yung bukos ng palay ay nagmula sa isang particular grain of palay that fell to the ground and died. And from that dying comes multiple life, multiple grain. And so Jesus Christ is saying to us this Sunday, death comes first before the resurrection. There is no resurrection without death. And so Christ has to undergo the same process of dying and rising in order to give, to give us the resurrection. Whoever loves his life loses it, Jesus Christ reminds us, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. The second point of the gospel, yes, we can offer ourselves, we can sacrifice, pero medyo parang mahirap. The second point is, even Jesus Christ also suffered the same dilemma. He said, I am troubled now. Sa Tagalog, mas maganda. Ako'y nababagabag. Ako'y nababagabag. Ano ba yung bagabag? Ang bagabag ay isang pagkabalisa. Pagkabalisa, pero mas malalim na pagkabalisa. Ito'y lubhang balisa. Kaya nga, favorite ko ito kapag ako'y nagsisermon about this uh, pagkabagabag. Pinapaulit ko sa mga tao. Pakiulit nga po, lalo sa mga, na, na, mga nasa bahay nila. Nakakapagpabagabag. Nakakapagpabagabag. Ulit mo ng maraming beses. Hindi ko alam kung kaya mong sabihin. Nakakapagpabagabag. Kung minsan medyo nabubulol na at iba na yung nasasabi. Nakakapagpabagabag. Yun na nga lang sasabihin mo yung salitang nakakapagpabagabag ay nakakapagpabagabag na talaga. How much more kung haharapin mo pa yung suffering, death, all the pains, being crucified on the cross, talaga nga namang mababagabag ka. Nakakapagpabagabag. Mas mabilis, nakakapagpabagabag. Jesus Christ said, I am troubled now. He must have been afraid about death. Kung si Kristo ay tao, with the feelings and the emotions like us, except sin, then it is safe to say na meron pa ring agam-agam si Kristo, hindi sa kamatayan, kundi doon sa mga sakit na kanyang mararamdaman kapag ipinako siya sa krus. Kung siya ay tao, merong emotions, etc., like us, except sin, then it is safe to say na meron din siyang agam-agam. Ibig sabihin, si Kristo, na ating tagapagligtas, ay dumaan din doon sa punto na yon na siya ay nabagabag. Kaya nga kanyang binanggit, I am troubled now. Ako'y nababagabag. And the second reading explained it better. It is said, He offered prayer and supplications with loud cries and tears. Sa Tagalog, at siya'y lumuluhang nagsusumamo sa Diyos. So nandudun pa rin yung pangamba ni Kristo. But he did not ask to be saved from death. Though clearly troubled, 
Christ was willing to pay the price. Sinabi doon sa second reading, bagamat siya Diyos, natutuhan niya ang tunay na kahulugan ng pagsunod sa pamagitan ng pagtitiis. And the third point, Jesus Christ said, And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. And this is the indication of His crucifixion. This is the final hint of His imminent dying or death on the cross. Ang pagkataas kay Kristo sa krus ang siyang naging hudyat ng kaligtasan ng lahat ng tao. This is also the affirmation of the first reading about the prophecy of Jeremiah when he said, All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord. And so brothers and sisters, during this season of Lent, we are invited once again to follow the footsteps of Christ. We still have how many weeks? At least two weeks, one week now, the next week, Holy Week, to make the best out of this season by carefully following the spirit of Lent, that is repentance and forgiveness. We have our own shares of sacrifices, of sufferings. Our parents, they have their own share of sacrifices. Yung mga lalong-lalo na sa mga walang-wala, na inuuna munang unahin ang pagkain ng kanilang mga anak para lamang hindi magutom. Ito yung mga sakripisyo ng mga magulang, ng mga anak, ng mga teachers, ng mga frontliners natin ngayon, ng mga doctors and nurses na nasa ospital at hindi makauwi sa kanilang mga bahay dahil takot na mahawaan ang kanilang mga mag-anak. We have our sacrifices. And this is our way of pagpaparamdam na mahal natin ang ating mga kapatid. And during this season, we are especially encouraged to show this love, to manifest this love for one another. Sabi nga ng isang tula, ang bawat pagtitimpi ay kamatayan ng masamang salita. Ang bawat pagpapakumbaba ay kamatayan ng pagiging mayabang. Ang bawat kabutihan ay kamatayan ng kasamaan. Ang bawat pagbibigay ay kamatayan ng pagiging ganid. Ang bawat pagmamahal ay kamatayan ng pagiging manhid. Ang bawat ngiti ay kamatayan ng kalungkutan. At ang bawat pagpapaubaya ay kamatayan ng pagiging sakim. Ang bawat hinahon ay kamatayan ng init ng ulo. So hindi natin kinakailangang literally na mamatay na sinasabi ng ating Panginoon. Hindi kinakailangang literal kang mamatay. Kundi ngayong panahon ng kwaresma, itong mga bagay na aking nabanggit, pagiging mabuti, pagbibigay, pagmamahal, pagngiti, pagpapaubaya, pagiging mahinahon, ito'y may katumbas na kamatayan na kasalanan. These are just simple hints, simple pagpapahiwatig that we can practice during this season of Lent. Sabi ko nga at lagi kong sinasabi, sa mga kabataan na nakakasama ko, yung sayang yung bawat minuto na nauubos natin sa pagbabangayan, sayang yung bawat segundo ng buhay natin na lumilipas sa hindi natin pagpapansinan. Kasi may ikli lang naman yung buhay, sandali lang tayo magkakasama-sama, eventually magkakahiwalay-hiwalay na. Sinasayang natin minsan yung kakaunting buhay na yon, yung kakaunting segundo ng buhay natin na yon, sa hindi natin pagpapansinan sa konting pakikipag-away, sa konting tampo, na pagkatapos iiyak tayo kapag uh, wala, na sa ta- wala na sa mundo ang taong ito. Papalahaw tayo ng iyak upang iparamdam sa kanya yung pagmamahal. Pero marami tayong panahon, marami tayong oras na sinayang nung siya pa ay nabubuhay. At the end, brothers and sisters, our recompense, our reward, in the first reading, Christ said, I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sins no more. I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sins no more. And that is our greatest consolation, that at the end of this life, the people will not judge us. Hindi tayo husgahan ng ating mga kapitbahay, ng ating mga kapitbahay na kuminsan ay mali lang natin ang nakikita. At the end of this life, hindi tayo husgahan ng, ating, ng kapwa nating tao na puro kamalian lamang yung nakikita sa atin. At the end of this life, our judge will be our merciful God. Ang Diyos na mawain 
at mahabagin at nangako sa atin, I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sins no more. Let us all stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through Him all things were made, for as men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness, for the forgiveness of, sins, of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered together to celebrate Christ's love unto death for all of us, let us submit to him the needs and intentions of all humankind, saying, Lord Jesus, hear us. Lord Jesus, hear us. For all the members of the church scattered throughout the world, may they be credible witnesses of the Father's love for every human being. We pray. Lord Jesus, Jesus, hear us. us. For the Holy Father, our bishop and parish priests, may they bravely persevere in their service, even in the face of disappointments and difficulties of all sorts. We pray. Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, hear hear us. us. For those who are undergoing persecution for the sake of the kingdom, may they remain faithful to their commitment to what is right and just, we pray. Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, hear hear us. us. For social workers and all those involved in public service, may they feel the support of the rest of the community in their efforts to form a better society, we pray. Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, hear hear us. us. For For those among us who are discouraged or afflicted, in whatever way may they unite their sufferings to those of our crucified lord we pray lord Lord jesus Jesus, hear hear us us. we pray for our personal intentions and the intentions offered in this mass we pray lord Lord jesus Jesus, hear hear us. us Lord Jesus, grant us the strength and the faith that we need to endure all trials in union with you till the end of our lives. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Donest our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Prayer for the unity of the family. God, our Father, loving and merciful, bring together and keep all families in perfect unity of love and mutual support. Infuse in each member the spirit of understanding, forbearance, and affection for each other. Keep quarrels, bitterness, and pettiness far from them and their occasional failures. Instill forgiveness and peace. May the mutual love and affection of parents be a source of loving obedience and discipline. May their chastity and fidelity be an inspiration for their children. Instill in children such self-respect that they may respect others, obey their parents, and those in authority, and grow in mature independence and the tender joy of friendship. Make the mutual affection and respect of families a sign of Christian life here and hereafter. Through Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Horatio Imperata Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country and the whole world. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, Pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. Saint Pedro Calumsud. Pray for us. Saints Arnold Johnson and Joseph Reinadovitz. Pray for us. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. On behalf of Father Bell San Luis SVD, 
of Mission Communications Foundation, Incorporated. We would like to thank the following for making our Family TV Mass possible. To Reverend Father Pablito Tagura SVD, Rector of Christ the King Mission Seminary. To Father, to Reverend Father Don Dion Soriano SVD, our Mass celebrant and homilist. Our lector, Brother Nino Verzosa. Our commentator, your commentator, Daryl Ibarra. Special thanks to our sponsors, donors, and benefactors. To our televiewers here and abroad, and our online audience, thank you. And also to our seminary staff and personnel, thank you and God bless us all. And once again, with the permission of uh, Father Bell San Luis, I would like to reiterate our call for young men, 15 to 35 years old, who are interested to enter the seminary and become a religious missionary. As members of the Society of the Divine Word, we are now administering uh, entrance exam. You can visit us at Christ the King Mission Seminary, or you can send us message first through our Facebook page, uh, SVD Vocation Promotion. And uh, this week, March 22 until uh, April 13, I will be in Palawan for vocation campaign. So I will be visiting the parishes under the SVD, uh, under the SVD missionaries in, throughout uh, Palawan. So from March 22 until uh, April 13, I will be there. And uh, for those who would like to enter, our Palawenos, uh, na gustong pumasok sa loob ng seminaryo, just uh, visit our Facebook page, SVD Vocation Promotion, for the schedule of the entrance exam. Once again, thank you. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, our Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Family TV Mass was brought to you by Achievers Fuel and Service Center Corporation, Dr. Montano G. Ramos General Hospital, and Planet Drugstore Corporation.